everyone's asking, what's the future of higher education going to look like? If current student behaviors and even retail consumers are any indication, we're going to be in a continuous loop of evolving our educational models. Take iconic stores we all grew up shopping in, like Sears, Macy's, Circuit City, Kmart, Toys R Us, who now have had to close many of their storefronts and choose to evolve or become extinct. Consumers want convenience. They're ordering stuff on Amazon or online. The digital transformation is affecting all aspects of our lives. In 2016, over 6 million students took at least one online course. One out of four college students take at least one class online, and these numbers are growing from year to year. At Embry-Riddle's worldwide campus, we've seen a very similar transformation. Our enrollment went from 9% virtual in 2004 to 91% in 2018, which posed an enormous challenge for us. How do we continue to evolve our infrastructure? From 150 campuses delivering face-to-face -face coursework to a primarily virtual campus that guarantees our students every single necessity that they would have at a traditional campus. Our students want a college feel and now they want it from the comfort of their own home. So our goal is to increase student affinity towards the institution. We want students to leave with an unparalleled education and to feel like they just had the greatest experience here. As an online institution, we wanted to know how losing the face-to-face -face relationship would affect our students. Would fewer students take courses next year? Would they feel less supported? We found exactly the opposite. Thanks to the holistic foundation we created under the RAP initiative, students and faculty are able to have a seamless experience no matter the location. As a result, our matriculation rates have increased 10%, our persistent rates have increased 17% during the same time period, and the course registrations have increased 24%. With our degrees being technical in nature, we needed advanced tools to ensure student competency and success. We started creating a few virtual labs. One is an aircraft accident investigation lab, or crash lab. The other is a UAV robotics lab. What's really interesting about them is that these are very technical labs that in the past had to be physical in nature, but now we're able to deliver these labs virtually. Technology is not cheap. As an institution, you look at cost as a barometer of can you afford it or not. So we do yearly reviews of our technology. We have to be open to new concepts. Our faculty have to be able to deliver new ideas to us that we can move upon, especially in these technical fields. We have this remarkable history of over 48 years in distance education and 25 years in online education, and we want to share our model. You watch our students getting out into industry, being successful with the things that they've learned online, things that historically people said could never be learned at a distance or online. We've learned that in all of the simulations that we are implementing, it needs to be cross-curricular instead of focusing on one individual course. It's truly rewarding to watch our model do a complete 180 degree turn. 9% virtual in 2004, and now it's 9% face-to-face in 2018. To accomplish this and to have increases in matriculations, persistence, and graduations, as well as keeping a population of over 24,000 students active, by completely overhauling our model is incredible. We want to continue setting trends. We were pioneers in 1971 when we started offering distance education, and also in 1993 when we started offering online courses. Our goal is to continue offering world-class online education but to also continue this evolution for the success of our students. We are truly only at the cusp of what is possible in online education.